it is April 10th, 2024, Lake the Ozarks Fishing Report, uh, brought to you by James and Denise Dale Guide Service here on Lake the Ozarks. Uh, we'll give you the water conditions and what's going on down here right now. We've got water temperatures, I'm going to say 52 to 58, kind of depending on where you're at. Uh, it's kind of fluctuating up and down. We've had some cold fronts. Um, some cold nights, uh, got some cold rain today. So, um, you know, it's kind of reached that low to mid 50s and it's kind of hanging there a, li a little bit. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the fish are kind of reacting to that. You know, uh, our clarity, boy, we're, we're all over with as far as water clarity. Wherever you like to fish, you can fish it right now. You can go up any of the river arms like the glaze. Uh, up the Gravois, up the Nianguas, uh, up the Osage, uh, Lynn Creek, you know, they're all got their own color, you know, uh, Lynn Creek starting to clear off a little bit, last week it was pretty muddy, um, and then there's different creeks, um, kind of as you go up the Osage, whether it be Bollinger or Cartwright, uh, you get way up, you know, Buffaloes, um, you know, and then like even in the Gravois, you get uh, Cedar, Bogue, um, any of them creeks up there, some of them got a lot of runoff and actually dirtied up. So you have sections of, you know, stain or clear, and then you've got one big major creek that had a lot of dirt in it. It looked like a totally different lake. So, you know, if you're down here scouting or looking around, just kind of maybe run, do a little running and um, kind of find a watercolor you're looking to fish because right now you can fish whatever you want you know um <clears throat> the glaze the glaze had dirtied up um pretty good so it had a lot of stain in it um you know uh, you know like i said you know lynn creek there was just several different ones but then you get down lake like say from toll bridge down to the dam man it's clear it's real clear i was there uh today on a trip and um it was extremely clear. I'm saying four foot, probably four foot, five foot visibility. Um, if it stays like that, we're probably going to see um, some of the best bed fishing we've seen in many years. Uh, you know, if, if we have Lake the Ozarks and you can see down five foot, we're going to see there's going to be a lot of, uh, if you're a good bed fisherman, a lot of beds visible this year that in the past haven't been. So it could be a really good year for um, guys wanting to fish fish beds, you know, basically in certain areas, you know. Um, what was yeah, the, the runoffs that you're talking about, they're in the backs, but then any of those areas okay. where, you know, you've got your ditches, that uh, the runoff, you can, you can literally see where that water has rushed through and right. it's disturbed uh, disturbed that area on those runoffs. And what, so what that does is it'll it'll bring a lot of rocks down, dirt down from the from the hillside and you'll see it kind of push out into the lake, uh, kind of make a a new little flat and then a little drop off. And those yeah. those drains like that are just natural feeding areas a lot of times for fish. They sure. know uh, that all that water coming is going to bring them, uh, <coughs> um, you know, just food of whatever it is, you know, worms or yeah. stir up crawfish. When that water's rushing down those hillsides, it turns over rocks and moves stuff, and and then fish know it, and and they go right to it and feed. So, um, and it's the same runoff areas all the time. So if you see these runoffs yeah, come down, visibly, yeah, you can see, see them. them. With where the ditches right so any of those you know they're, they're good places to fish you know right now because the, the, a lot of fish have moved uh i'm gonna say this last week um you know we were we were on a pretty good bite pretty consistent bite uh i don't know i'm not gonna say way up river uh but mid lake area you know and um it's kind of went away for us uh at least for me the last uh, a couple times out there it just hasn't been consistent, you know. Um, fished the tournament last weekend, um, and man, had them going. Uh, and we ended up we only had uh, we only had two fish. Um, we seen a couple other real good ones, you know. We had hooked, um, so we knew the fish were there, and we were doing the right things. 
but we just weren't getting the bite. So those fish, um, and those fish are just like, say, up, um, up the glaze or up the nanglas. Those fish are just way a lot further along than some of your other fish, say, down lake. And we're really seeing that now um, as far as uh, where, you, where you want to target and where you want to fish. You know, now, uh, upper, upper lake, those fish are, are probably, you know, that water's 55, 56. So I'm going to say 61. by Sunday, mid-next week, there's going to be a lot of fish move up um, and probably start trying to spawn. You know, um, I personally haven't seen any beds yet. There may be some, but I would say by the end of next week, there'll definitely be some beds. Um, and, you know, in that dirty water, you may not see them, but you can fish that stuff like there's a bed there. You know, so basically you're going to be fishing pea gravel, little pockets, uh, flatter flatter points maybe um, you know the these these different transitions from from say baseball size uh, rocks down to that pea gravel or just little sections of pea gravel little uh, subtle pockets like if you have a big creek and you got a little subtle pocket uh, maybe <clears throat> I don't know maybe the size of uh, you know three pickup trucks or something where these fish can just kind of Kind of get off the main channel, rather be a creek channel, and go in there and spawn, and come back out where it's protected from from winds or or whatever it is. You know, they just want to be kind of protected. Um, you know, it's it's a good place to to try. You know, and, and the next couple weeks, um, or at least the next week, I'd say at least a week. You know, we might as well say two weeks. There's going to be so many different things going on fishing wise that you can do and we've been doing it for the last what two weeks you know you can go out on any given day and have <laughs> 10 rods in the front deck because everything's working right now you know we're throwing <clears throat> you know just some of the baits like uh yesterday i guess it was yesterday yeah our bite our, our best bite almost really our only bite was a wiggle wart our rock crawler and we were in some dirtier water and that's all we could get a bite on was a, was a wiggle wart or rock crawler and that's kind of been the same the last a week I guess you know that that's been the best bite and I don't know because there's a lot of fish moving in moving out they're they're on main lake they're in secondary they're halfway back they're way in the back but obviously with a bait like this if you don't have a real solid pattern you can just pick this up and you're just covering water you know obviously you're, you're throwing at least a 45 degree maybe a 60 degree where um, you're, you're covering a lot of water you're throwing way in front of you not quite paralleling but keeping this bait digging in the rocks you know from I don't know a foot and a half out to this thing will probably run seven foot maybe eight foot you know on, on 12 pound test and just digging in them rocks, bouncing off of stuff. Um, some of these fish may ne not necessarily be feeding, but this thing bounces by them, and they're going to they're going to grab it, you know, just out of instinct or what have you, you know. Uh, but that dirty water, the red's been working pretty good. Um, caught some also on the natural crawl green in the in the clear water. Um, it's just kind of a normal standard colors you know that that work here and they, they work here for forever um i don't care what lake you're on if you kind of match the um the clarity of water you know with with your bait it's kind of a pretty safe bet um uh, pretty um standard go-to colors you know um you know the wig has been working good you know we're just throwing it uh like on a, on a seven foot seven foot two medium action rod with 12 pound test, either fluorocarbon or monofilmin. You know, some people like monofilmin for it because it stretches, you got your treble hooks, you get your fish hooked, and when they pull or uh, you set the hook, there's enough give that it won't pull them little treble hooks out, but it still keeps them hooked. Um, or you can throw, you know, uh, fluorocarbon. It's just kind of your preference, what you, what you like, you know. Um, so right now the wiggle arts are pretty good 
solid bait to go to. Um, your stick baits are still real good. Um, yes, let's see. Today, today the stick bait was definitely the bite. We had a little bit of wind. We had rain all day. The boat's still wet. Um, but man, the, the fish were feeding today. They were feeding good. Uh, we, I had a really good trip. Caught a, a ton of fish today. Um, caught a few keepers, um, which has really changed from, say, over the weekend uh, or even what I think it was Monday. Monday, um, the trips, they, um, I'll be honest, they, they were slow. They were very slow, um, and it, which was telling me that these fish are changing. They're in the process of changing where they're locating, how they're setting up, their feeding habits, everything, because the way we were catching them last week, it changed, you know, um, the last few days. So um, it took, it takes a while to get off of what you were doing, which was so consistent, um, and you, you've got to, you know, keep it in your mind, you've got to change, especially in the spring when things are changing. And they've definitely changed. And today we made a, a drastic change of water clarity, location, and baits, and it made a huge difference. We went from catching, man, just not a lot of fish. I mean, the last few days, um, it was kind of a struggle just to catch fish, you know, and, and keepers were almost non-existent, you know, for, for me and a couple of my trips, you know, some shorts, um, and we end up, you know, resorting to crappie when, when that happens, because um, they're still really consistent, you know, so. A lot, um, of, a lot of short fish. A lot of swordfish, which means obviously he's telling us yeah. the males are really coming. They're coming hard. You know, they're going to get up there. They're going to root around. They're going to start making their beds. <coughs> you know, um, the big females, um, I've seen a couple the last two weeks. You know, a couple few, you know, but not like an abundance of, and when I say big females, anything, I'm going to say over three and a half, four pounds, you know, um, um, obviously in tournaments that's you you're looking for anything over three and a half four pounds you know um and those have been a little uh, a little scarce you know last like i said last week we had some opportunities um and obviously we were flipping we were we were flipping some dirty water behind docks um it takes forever to do that to do it right if it's working it can be extremely rewarding um, you catch five fish in the entire day, eight hours, and they all weigh over four, you're in great shape. If you don't get them bites and you spend all day doing that, you might end up with two, three, maybe four fish, you know, but that's, <clears throat> that's kind of a flipping game. Um, you, you gotta have the confidence to continue to do it. Um, we caught a ton of short fish, but them big fish obviously are what you're after. So, uh, the big fish, where are they at? You know, we got the big bass bass coming up. Um, that's next next weekend. So we're going to do another just a special big bass uh, bass video on that as we get a little closer next week. But obviously those big fish um, that it's going to take to win that, um, there's been some big fish show up the last week and a half, two weeks, uh, last week. There was several tournaments, um, several seven pounders brought in, several sixes, heavy sixes. Um, I mean, several, like five in each tournament. So that's, that's really good. Um, you know, you're seeing those, you're seeing, uh, a lot of keepers, which are your males showing up. Um, but, but the baits for those, at least what I'm going to say, um, this week, um, and next week, um, I would see the jig. Just a little, a little finesse jig, a little crocky getter zapper. It's kind of my go-to, especially if it's tough out. Um, it's just Ozark crawl. It's kind of what I throw. Um, green pumpkin, red flake, ring crawl. Um, is, is kind of my go-to. Uh, but some of these bigger baits or other baits that will produce these bigger fish, just, um, just traditionally, they always produce big fish. They may not catch as many numbers, but <clears throat> for the bass, you're looking for big fish, obviously. So, baits for that. Um, obviously, your spinnerbait. I'll let you talk about spinnerbait here in a minute. 
Um, our jerk baits, I'm going I'm to throw jerk baits. This is just the Pro Blue uh, Vision 110. Kind of a standard color. Um, there's other ones, you know, shad colored. Um, maybe, uh, what's that? Edo Natural is a good one. Um, Spawn Cherry is a good one. What's some others here? Wakasaki. Yeah, Wakasaki is a good one. And they're all similar versions, colors, shad versions. But some have a little purple on it. Some have a little green on it. Um, some's more of a pearl. Um, kind of switch up with your stick baits, especially if you're in the clear water, because I really think the, the color really makes a huge difference. When you can see five foot, they're going to see them little details, and it's going to make a big difference. You know, throw that on eight, 10, maybe 12 pound test. Um, in that clear water, you get up in the dirtier water, at least 12, maybe 14. Um, you know, and, your, and some of your fish will hit differently <coughs> up, up lake or up these river arms. If you're fishing water that's, oh, three foot, two foot, and less visibility, you're going to want to throw right on the bank, throw something with a little color in it. You know, maybe, um, I say that color, you know, some of your red stick baits, but then the pearl really flashes. And, and sends off a lot of flash in that dirty water. Uh, throw it right on the bank, pull it in two foot and let it sit there. Because a lot of these fish are just hanging three, four foot off of the bank. You twitch it your first, second time, and that's when they're on it in that dirtier water. Um, you know, not that clear water. Like today we caught fish right on the bank, but the majority of them were sitting, you know, we're sitting in probably 20, 25 foot of water a good cast to the bank and they were coming halfway back to the to the boats especially the keepers your little bigger fish they're kind of suspended they're staging um, it's just a classic year right now as far as how these fish are progressing um, you know in, in the first week of April there's a lot of uh, males up and a lot of females staging and those fish are just kind of hanging out there um, you know, just off of the bank. They might be six, eight foot down. Um, and you can see them. You can see them hanging there. Uh, and those are the fish we're catching with the stick bait mm -hmm. or the spinner bait. You had a pretty good spinner bait bite on. What are you catching? Yeah, what are you doing there? Spinner bait. Uh, this is a, an E Factor. I throw, I've been throwing the half ounce, of course, with the wind. If, it ha if I have some wind, I, I throw more like a three quarter. <laughs> I've uh, pretty much wore this paint off of this one. I, I put a tra three uh, uh, trailer hook on it, and uh, with your white and chartreuse blade. Uh, basically, I'm looking similar banks than you know similar banks in a sense where you're throwing your jerk baits, um, and um, I'm looking for laydowns. One of the big things uh, with these with these. Uh, so you're Spinner fishing baits, the dirtier water. Dirtier the, water for the laydowns. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the dirtier water. And laydowns go together because these the dirtier water the fish are shallower. Yes. And they're laying at on these laydowns or at the right. end of these laydowns. Right, right. Uh, you can even go, you know, your main lake, main lake points, your secondary points. But I, I, I am like I said, looking for uh, any laydowns uh, that you can that you can uh, get this in front of them. That's have has been yeah. very effective. basically the. The shallow cover, you know, in that little dirtier water, dingier water, these fish are going to go, they're going to push shallow. They just, that's a, how they act. They want to relate to something in that dirtier water. So uh, it might be shallow brush, uh, lay downs, like you said, that, you know, may come off of the bank and extend out in that water, maybe at least eight, 10 foot off of the bank. And they'll lay right along them lay downs to be right up against something. And, mm -hmm. I mean, a spinnerbait slow road down through there has caught many a big fish, you know, throughout the, throughout the years. Yeah. Now like main lake, um, you know, I would say, oh, 30 mile marker down where the water is a little clear, you know, just main lake point stuff. Um, I'm throwing like this, this is just a big custom spinner bait that I had made. It's got a big, uh, nickel willow and then a smaller gold Colorado, little chartreuse head. Um, it's called that mouse color. It's kind of got a gray, white, and then I got a little, um, I believe that is a reaction innovation, little swim bait, a little dipper with just a little bit of chartreuse on it. 
Um, and that thing thrown up on these main lake points and either reeled just below the surface where you can't where you can barely see them blades or midway down through the water column or even just follow the contour of your of your points sure. you know and uh, see where you may maybe get a bite or two but that one that big spinnerbait uh, especially if you've got some wind obviously the wind we've had no lack of wind mm -hmm. for the last two weeks it seems like it's windy every day mm -hmm. today was a little better um but now tomorrow it's supposed to blow 15 again. So the spinnerbait's just a great bait. When it's real windy and it's kind of hard to throw anything else, even a crankbait sometimes, you're trying to throw it and just doesn't want to throw in the wind, it, it sometimes can be a little, a little troublesome. Uh, a big three quarter ounce uh, spinnerbait, man, you can launch that thing, it goes in the wind and you can cover a lot of water with it and it can really produce sure. big, yeah. you know. Um, I and like I that. think, uh, yeah, and I think, uh, you know, you, you, you see, you feel the wind, the wind's crashing in on your points. A lot of times in our minds, we think go main lake, but I, I, and I agree with that, but, but don't forget about those secondaries because you can get out of the wind a little bit more, but there's still enough wind that I think the, that the spinnerbait can be effective on yeah, a lot of those secondary points. Also. And that's, that's true. It's kind of been holding true where you still got wind, enough presence of wind to, to ripple that water and get those fish active. Um, and it may be a secondary point or not even a secondary point, maybe just a good uh, staging bank. When I say staging bank, that's usually a little steeper bank leading into the spawning areas. And if that wind's blowing directly in on that, Boy, they'll really load up on some of the banks and they'll come up and feed. And, and a spinnerbait's just a great way to go down that and, <clears throat> and and cover some water and catch some potential big females that are that are just coming up. I know some big females have been up, but I'm convinced this past week and for the next two, three weeks, they're really gonna be pushing. We got a new moon phase coming up, and I think your our biggest majority of big females are going to move this week um, and there you're going to see a lot of them um, there's some tournaments this weekend there's a bass world there's ozark mountain and an anglers in action so i expect it to be just a big slug fest all weekend mm -hmm. there's going to be some big big fish and some big weights five five fish bag you know of fish yeah. um, but obviously if you're just coming down fishing and you don't don't worry about tournaments these baits are still the deal, you know, um, throw you a big spinner bait, throw you the jerk baits, um, kind of wind related. Mm -hmm. um, if it's calm and you want to get out of the wind, throw you a, a little jig around those, you know, where transition mm -hmm. rocks, where you can see the lake still down. Um, I don't think I told you it's 655.54. So it's four and a half foot down. Your, your banks still are exposed of uh, these transition, big rocks, small rocks, pea gravel. You can see it all right now. So just kind of look at your banks and target those transitions um, out just inside Main Lake, halfway back, way in the backs. And hit them all until you catch a, a few fish. Um, and you, you're starting to see a lot of fish uh, all kind of do the same thing. So if you go into a, a bigger creek or even a cove and you... You catch a couple fish, just really pay attention of the bank, the rock transitions, how far you are back there, and then just start duplicating it. Then go to the next creeks for the next two, three miles. Go to the exact same uh, uh, you know, scenario as far as rocks and, and see if you can't duplicate it because that's kind of what we're seeing now. Once we figure out where they're at, and they are moving quite a bit, uh, even day to day, um, you know, we had some rain and they pulled a lot of water for a while um, and they're still pulling, I don't know, I've watched the, like the last couple of days, anywhere from 5,000 to 20,000. You know, they'll ramp it up for a couple hours. They'll keep, they'll run 11,000. As long as there's current and a lot of it, it's going to keep a lot of fish just relating to a point of some sort, um, whether it be main lake, secondaries, uh, little indentations on bluffs, bluff shelves. Uh, we're seeing some fish show up on bluffs 
already, you know, um, and they're just gonna, I think as there's some current, you know, some of these fish just react to it. Some may not, depending on how far advanced they're into their spawning mode. Once that kicks in, nothing really matters. But until that really kicks in in their brain, I think they still relate to, you know, current fluctuating waters, right. what have you. You know, um, other baits we're starting to throw is like the big uh, Chad Shad, uh, that uh, the Spro. Uh, I personally, for the money, um, I think this is the best. Um, I threw another brand today. Um, it had a plastic tail on it. I threw it about six times. I said that thing. I mean it. It was almost useless. It just, it kind of laid on the side, didn't want to swim uh, compared to this one here. You throw it out there and let it sink, you know, a foot or two and, and start working it. Man, that thing just looks so natural. Um, and this will create some giant bass this time of year. So the big Chad Shad, um, especially for next week or even this week, but for the bass, this would be something I'd have tied on. Um, what else you got? This here is starting. Yeah, we to, were. Yeah, we were talking about the opposite from Chad. She and I yes. was going to finesse it. Yeah, I was going to try to plug it in there real quick with the jig. But <laughs> when you're talking about uh, getting out of the wind and slowing down a little bit, uh, you can't go wrong setting up uh, a spinning rod. This is a seven foot uh, medium action uh, spinning rod set up. Set up on. I've uh, got um, braid, twenty pound braid with a. Uh, 10 pound leader mm -hmm. and uh, this is an amazing bait to use you can you can you think maybe it's tough or you can't do it I used to have the same thoughts myself you can skip these way underneath those cables and get this bait exactly where you want to get this bait and it skips like you wouldn't believe and on the spinning rod setup where are you trying to break it I'm trying to put it underneath the cables between the between the bank and the dock. Get right. Right underneath, underneath the catwalk where uh, the catwalks. especially on a bright sunny day, yep. timer day, um, something else ain't working. You know, you can skip these with the spin rod and reel, you're not getting backlash. You skip it way underneath these catwalks, um, and it, it's a wacky rig, and you just you just subtly let it sink down, um, give a couple twitches. Uh, she likes throwing hers on this little, what is yeah, that, little 316s? it's a Gamagatsu uh, Wacky Head, and it's a 316 and then I just hook my worm mm -hmm. through it, and it's it's phenomenal. It's You know, where some, um, I like throwing it weightless. I like it to sink real slow um, and kind of get uh, in front of them a lot longer as these uh, females are moving up there to stage, um, even as we progress a little further and the males are up in there. And the females are up in there kind of protecting, staging, feeding up a little bit. That little slow fall bait right there in their area, um, they can't resist it. You know, it's a really good, uh, tough bite day, finesse bait that you can switch up. So you can kind of see we're, we're all over with different, different baits, but they're all using, or uh, they're all working. Uh, another bait we're starting to throw, it's going to be really, really good. Uh, for the next several weeks is the Carolina rig. You know, the Carolina rig, I, uh, I know the, the bass has been one on it uh, a couple times, um, and this time of year it's, it's one of the best baits to throw. Cover water, uh, it's, they're easy to throw. You can kind of see I got a three quarter ounce brass weight on there. I got a glass bead on there, and then I've got a swivel. So you've got your, your swivel, your glass bead, your glass bead up against the swivel, and then your weight. And this slides on her. I know guys like to peg theirs. I don't. I like mine to slide on there. So when I'm dragging that bait along and it's hitting, and I stop it, and a fish picks this up, and they start swimming with it or lifting it up, that slides through my line, okay? And they're not feeling that weight. And they pick this up, and that line slides through there and allows me to detect that bite maybe before they feel that unnatural weight. So I like that. This is kind of the traditional way of throwing it. I know there's some out there that are pre-set up. They've got a 
about an eight inch wire with a tie on this end, a tie on this end, and the weight and all slides in it. But it's just, I just don't like it. I like just the natural free sliding um, deal. I usually spool up with 17 pound fluorocarbon on my main line, and then I've got my swivel, and then I'll tie 12 pound monofilament here. One, it, it allows it to float. It doesn't sink so fast. Um, there's a little stretch in it, so it doesn't get hung up so bad. Um, if you do, it'll, it'll stretch a little bit and, and a lot of times come loose. Um, like you see here, I've got about a two and a half, three foot liter. Uh, the clearer the water, the longer the liter, up to maybe five foot. You know, usually three to five foot is your liter. If you're fishing dirtier water, you want a, a smaller liter. Um, you know, this this weight is, is, you know, bouncing along the bottom, dragging along the bottom. It's stirring up dirt. Uh, it looks natural like a crawfish or something rooting around. And then you're dragging it. You're just dragging it along slow where you can feel that weight. And then you got this back here. I like the kind of my old go-to is a Zoom Lizard. It's a, it's a six inch. This is a six inch Zoom Lizard is what that is. Green pumpkin, use a green pumpkin. Chartreuse tail uh, is just kind of a go-to. Uh, it's a six inch lizard um, on a three-aught wide gap hook. Um, usually Gamagatsu, you know, Mustad, uh, even Eagle Claw. Um, but you can see how that's rigged up. It's rigged up weedless and you just drag it along. The thing just kind of naturally floats behind it. Um, and it, you know, when that, that weight's stirring up stuff, it gets their attention. They come to investigate. You got this coming back there and they grab it. It's an extremely easy technique um, and very effective, especially now um, pre-spawn, um, spawn, and even post-spawn. You know, and you just target target points. You can target middle of pea gravel uh, pockets where they're gonna spawn, just right in the middle of the gut, uh, transitions. Um, really anywhere anywhere you think fish are staging or moving or maybe holding you just throw it up to the bank and drag that thing out there you're a steady drag reel back up to it drag it again and you're feeling it. everything is going on and the, the fish will pick it up and a, a lot of times you'll feel that hit or they'll just pick it up and start moving it so that's carolina rig it's very very effective you can throw it with a number of baits um, and different rigs and every one of these I'll go through them and they'll work. Yeah, I usually start with the lizard, the zoom lizard, um, the zoom brush hog, full size brush hog, the crocodile gator F-bomb. This is just a small, a little more finesse. Uh, you would throw that with like a, a little two-odd hook, but this is just a small, it kind of kicks a little bit different. It's got a little more uh, kicking, got some tentacles on it. Um, you know, something like that. A little creature bait, a little swamp bug works great. Swamp bug senior. Um, the um, sweet beaver from Reaction Re Innovations is kind of similar to the F-bomb, more of a, a creature bait, you know. And then another bait that's kind of uh, not really a secret, but you, you kind of downsize your, um, your rig. You throw a spinning rod reel, maybe a lighter action rod, maybe 12 pound test with maybe an eight pound liter. Um, and this is just, this is just a little ring, uh, ring fry. Um, let's see, this is the double ringer this is called. There's one called the fish doctor and they're all similar. They're just real subtle, do nothing. Got rings on them. It's extremely subtle, but we'll get a lot of bites. I mean, a lot of bites. It's more of a finesse Carolina rig compared to your three quarter ounce, you know, uh, big, bigger uh, bait on there. And this, you know, you're throwing a spin rod reel. I like to throw it with braid um, and then a leader. I mean, you can feel everything and you're only throwing it with a quarter ounce weight. So it's very subtle um, and it just, it just gets a lot of bites. It's, it's um, probably I get more bites than, than anything this, this type of year. I mean, there's about a two, three week period where it's, it's just deadly. So, um, you know, try that. Um, if you're not getting bites, 
What else you got there that you've been throwing? We've got, we've got everything covered. Everything covered. Another bait yeah. uh, we've been throwing, yeah. and obviously we kind of learned it throwing <coughs> fish for crappie. Denise caught a six, a six three a couple weeks ago. Uh, our sister-in-law caught a four eighty the other day. Um, I caught a big one today um, on a little easy shiner, three inch Kitech fishing for crappie. Um, was that yesterday? When did you guys have that yeah. one to chase that crappie? Two days, two days ago, I had a crappie. Uh, all three of us were in the boat, and I cast out and caught a crappie. And I'm reeling that crappie in, and all of a sudden, I see this mouth right behind that crappie, and it was a large mouth with a big fish. Yeah. And and I, I I'm think I'm visual I'm figuring this crappie's going hurry 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 he's coming after me you know real real faster. But large mouth. That large mouth. A was large mouth right with a big fish. After him. That don't make sense. But. No, a large I, that that crappie's going hurry hurry. It was a large know. crappie with a big. Fish a large crappie, it. yes, with a big fish bite. <laughs> Did I say anyway, wrong? yeah, you kind yeah. of said it. Anyway, Anyways. a crappie. So what's it telling? Obviously, we know. Bass love to eat them crappie. They hang out on these docks where all these crappie are, you know, um, like with the A rig or stick baits or spinner baits, target some of these docks, these bigger docks where you might see big loads of crappie underneath it on your live scope. Run them baits alongside her because them big bass, will, they like to eat them crappie. Well, your Alabama rig, your stick baits, your swim baits uh, imitate some of that and they'll run out and grab it, which what I was getting at with the little easy shiner catching big fish is swimming and switching up with just single swim baits mm -hmm. thrown right to the bank uh, on some of these same baits and, re and retrieving it. Something like the 3.5 um, swing impact by Kitech. Just throw that like on an eighth or a quarter ounce um, and just, just easy throw it, get a lot of bites. Or you can even go, you know, obviously bigger. Um, I got this rig going. I throw this a lot. Um, it's just on a 3 8 ounce jig head. And this is a, uh, what is it, a 4? Probably. Yeah, a 4 inch. Um, like a, uh, this is actually the Bass Pro Speed Shed, um, the Kitex, the, um, what are reaction innovations, mm -hmm. whatever, all these swim baits. You can see this, it's got an open hook. Three at a time, you just throw it up to the bank, let it sink down, maybe whatever, three, four foot, and just steady retrieve it. This single lonely shad swimming by itself. You get anywhere near a bass that's thinking about feeding, he's gonna come up and grab this. This is another extremely easy bait to throw, and it will catch a lot of fish and some big fish. Um, you know, even like the bass, something like this could easily when the big bass bass, you're covering a lot of water. It looks natural. Um, if fish are spawning, close to spawning, and you swim this over around the bed, they're gonna grab it. Yeah. If they're feeding heavy, they're gonna grab it. You know, it's just um, just another bait that you can throw, um, especially if it's windy, this thing will throw easy. You throw it up there and you just reel it back. There's no, mm -hmm. um, like feel like a jig or something trying to have to feel or throw in the wind. You know, um, it's springtime. It's going to be windy about every day, every other day. So obviously having um, baits that being set up and prepared for the weather and what conditions you're going to have. Right now, I don't, you probably can't hear it, but it's pouring. It's raining hard. It's about 48 degrees and it's raining. So this water that's 55, 54, it's going to drop down. It's going to drop back down to the low, right at 50s, um, and it just keeps them fish holding. And they're, but more are coming, so they're they're piling up on these staging banks, um, and that just means to me, like this this coming weekend, it's going to be 75, 80 degrees, windy. The big fish are moving. They're going to feed. They're going to feed heavy for the next couple weeks before they go into the spawn mode. Um, so just Look for some of the best fish in these, these next next couple weeks. You know, um, the bass, the big bass bass, like it says, next week, it's probably going to hit pretty close to perfect. Um, I believe you could put on spinnerbait and nothing else and go to, and just keep covering water, cover from point 
to the very back, come back out, you know, stick bait, same deal. Carolina rig. Um, we'll go over all that um, again next week, uh, mid to late next week, as we get close to the bass and we see any kind of change in uh, conditions that we might be able to, um, you know, tune you into to maybe help your odds. But, um, you know, it, I'm looking for a, a good bass this year. Um, I'm not sure what the record is for a big bass bass, but we might see a record broke this big bass bass year. Um, the lake is in extremely good condition. We are catching small bass, big bass. They're healthy. Um, I mean, they're just, they, they look really good. Same with crappie. You know, crappie's still been real good. It's kind of slowing down a little bit. It's not really slowing down as much as the crappie are breaking up to these big schools. You're starting to see them. Some are breaking up and going to the bank. Uh, some are, you know, out on Main Lake. I found a, a whitish uh, crappie today. As Main Lake as you can get over 20 foot of water. And they were down there about 15 foot. I haven't caught any that deep for a while. Um, and they were, there were some good ones today. So they're still out there. Um, there's some moved back. There's some halfway back in these creeks. A lot of them staging up underneath some of these uh, swim platforms, you know, where you got to shoot up on there. Uh, big cruiser boats that are in the water, and they're going down drafting about five, six foot of water. A lot of them sh uh, crappie are right underneath or right on the sides of them. You can shoot in along them big cruiser docks, let that bait go down about five foot and swim it. And a lot of them fish are coming up there. They're underneath these uh, boat lifts. You know, they're notorious for getting underneath the boat lifts. But if you get a, a bait back in there and swim it through there, you know, um, you, you can get them to pull out. You know, they're getting aggressive. They're just like the bass. So, you know, uh, that's probably about all we have for you. You know, um, fishing's fishing's it's changing right now. So if you were here and you caught them a week ago, you may be surprised this week because no, I know when I went out uh, Sunday, um, I was I was in for a little bit of surprise. You know, we had um, we only had a couple couple fish, a um, couple of decent ones, and like I said, uh, lost a great big one and seen some others. Um, and I could we come in and I thought, man, it was really tough today. And I think 26 pounds won a tournament. There were several 18s, 19s. The other tournament had 22, 23, and I'm like, well. I missed it today. I missed the setup. I missed the area. Whatever it was. So it happens. And at this time of year, um, you're either, I feel like you're either catching them and you're catching them good or you're struggling and you're searching. So just be open minded to that. That it's, it's going to happen. Um, and it, ha it happens every year. You know, they, they get in a transition. You used to catch them one way or you're expecting one way. And just doesn't happen. So um, obviously, if you're not that, catching them, yeah. just switch. Switch. I'm booked in April. I'm booked through May, just about a couple of days. Um, Denise is, is booking up. She's got several days open. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's really good. A lot of people are out. A lot of people are fishing. I'm seeing a lot of people buying new boats. Um, a lot of families coming down. Uh, new boat owners. against personal um, vendettas or, or what it is, 
Um, that's what not, it's not what fishing's about. It's not what it should be about. If you've got a negative um, thought or negative whatever it is, um, and obviously we're on on social media, you hear one side most of the time. You don't hear both sides. You don't hear the full story. Just um, try to ignore the negativity and, and do what fishing's about. Fishing's about fun first. We get to experience with clients, uh, trips. Um, people don't care about, about the negativity. They're just like, my kid's Make seven now. Nice. My yeah. kid's 10. Yeah. My kid's 30. I'm retiring. Uh, we just moved to the lake. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we see people out there enjoying themselves. And we, we decided we, we want to buy a boat. We want to fish. That's what it's all about. Then we got tournaments. Tournaments are fun. They're a lot of work. But fishing's about fun. Um, and just enjoying. enjoy it. Enjoying I, it. Ignore the negativity. Uh, because most of the negativity are, are uh, people uh, pursuing their own self-interest. Yeah. And that, that's what I'll say right there. Yeah. Um, other than that, just um, keep an open mind, open mind, ignore that stuff because uh, fishing is it's, for it's fishing. It's fishing fun. It's fish. It's from people who are yeah. four year old to I've had ninety year olds in the boat um, today and tomorrow. I get uh, the pleasure uh, Vietnam vet. Um, incredible stories. Um, guy had open heart surgery. Few years ago he beat cancer last year and he's in the boat today and all he was worried about was and we enjoyed it mm -hmm. and tomorrow I'm looking forward to the same same yep. two guys same trip um, I enjoy it I can't uh, that's that's what's out there enjoy it um, when people, um, don't let it unenjoyable or too right. much too much work right. I guess right. you know either way my, my trip my trip on Saturday is a gentleman called me and he wanted me to take his mom out for Mother's Day there you go. a way to celebrate Mother's mm -hmm. Day for his mom right so yeah. perfect you know Great. obviously we see the other side of it yeah. and what it's all about um, and I guess maybe the older we get the more we're leaning back towards mm -hmm. that port of fishing so I just encourage you to enjoy the fishing and uh, and it's enjoyment. It's we're seeing eagles today. We see a we seen a giant eagle. I don't care who you are. A big eagle glides over you here in America. It's a neat deal. So mm -hmm. a lot of neat stuff to see. The trees are blooming. You know the mushrooms are oh, popping. Oh yeah, and the uh, uh, the gooselings. What they are? I don't, the I don't know what they are, but the babies. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's early. I've seen some sitting on eggs. She said today she's seen some Seven some little eight, ones little following. Babies. So they're already yeah. hatching. So that means top water is right around the, the corner. Um, but either way, that's all we got for you this time. Um, we'll we'll tune in next week with a big bass bash report. Uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Shoot some comments. Whatever the comments is, we really like them. We like to build on them. Uh, we get a lot of emails or a lot of just messages or texts about stuff um, and anything we can help you with just just give us a call uh, one last thing I, my lower unit went out uh, two weeks ago in the BFL uh, Gary down at Sport World got right on it got me a, a lower unit um, I gotta thank Denise for allowing me to use her boat for a couple trips last week we shuffled some some trips around uh, she postponed or moved hers so I could do mine, uh, but I got my boat back. Obviously, you can see it. Got my loaner unit back on. Gary and them guys got me going again, saved me. Um, so we're back back on the water. Uh, we'll be fishing for